I, I grew up uh, in a community where 90% of the people were black in the Crenshaw district. And uh, I didn't have a white friend uh, until I went to UC Irvine undergraduate. And I had these, when I went to college, I just had these preconceived ideas um, about people who were, who didn't look like me. Um, long story short, then I end up getting into becoming a lawyer. I went to USC uh, and I got into the I just found this job and uh, I was really bored with the law job that I had. So I applied to the, the city attorney's office just to find out if I even liked this work. And for the first time in my life, I started working with police officers. Uh, I often wondered in those early days, uh, because if I was, there would be times I'd be assigned to a, a office, a satellite office, where I'd be the only black person who wasn't in custody. And all of my white lawyers, the only other black people or Latino people they saw were defendants. And I wondered, you know, psychologically, what impact they had had. Um, then with police officers, I became become friends. You know, I, I ended up seeing beyond their badge, their uniform, and seeing them as Bob or as... Curtis, or, you know, it, it just, because you're working with somebody every day, you begin to see the humanity of them. Um, then I raised an African-American son, six foot five, uh, and, and a nephew I mentioned. And, you know, they, they thoroughly, they're millenn millennials, I think. They're in their 30s now, so that would be millennials. And, you know, they used to thoroughly embrace the hip hop culture and they would wear the saggy pants and what have you. But I wondered if they were being stereotyped, you know, by the way they dress. And so I think we all have these stereotypes now and no one's really looking at the individual. And I say that, I see that with police culture, but I also see that uh, with some members of my own family who don't know police officers very well. 